Okay, good morning or good afternoon from wherever you're joining us. Welcome to today's webcast on the opportunity of digital transformation for professional services organizations. My name is Thomas Meredith. I'm the Vice President of Marketing for RTM Consulting, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. Uh, we're excited to also have Wade Little, uh, our technology practice leader with us to present today's webcast. We're scheduled for 30 minutes today, so let me cover just a few items at the start and then we can get going. Um, we are recording the webinar. Uh, later today, you will be receiving an email with a link to that recording. Um, and we've also made a PDF copy of the presentation deck available. You have a handout window there in your GoToWebinar panel. Feel free to uh, download that if you wish. And we are uh, gonna have a brief Q&A session uh, at the end of the broadcast. Again, as I mentioned, we only have you for 30 minutes, but we do wanna take a few minutes at the end to answer any questions. So as we're going through the presentation, uh, feel free to enter in your questions in your questions window of the GoToWebinar panel. I'll be pulling those and we'll do a brief session at the end. Okay, uh, that's it for me, let's get started. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, presenting today's webcast is Wade Little, Technology Practice Leader here at RTM Consulting. Wade, welcome, I'll hand it off to you. Great, thanks Thomas. Hi everyone and, and, and welcome. As Tom said, my name is Wade Little and I'm going to be leading today's webinar. I lead RTM Consulting's technology practice. I've been with RTM Consulting for three going on four years now. Uh, I've been in the workforce for around 30 years. Uh, most of that time uh, spent at a variety of the big five uh, consulting companies. Uh, I've been on both sides of the fence. I've, I've spent the majority of my career uh, as a consultant providing services uh, to clients, but I've also been on the other side of the fence as a buyer of professional services uh, and technology. So I have both perspectives. Um, also over my, my career, uh, I've been in a variety of roles ranging from IT strategy uh, to practice leadership to just straight up project delivery. Um, I've included a uh, link to my LinkedIn profile here for those that want to want to see uh, more about me. And there we go. Navigating through the, the, the slides here. Uh, so a, a little bit more about uh, our, our company, our team consulting for, for those that aren't familiar with us. Uh, we're a management consulting firm. Uh, we've been around for 12 years. Uh, our focus is on helping services organizations get better at what they do. That's our, our, our tagline there. Uh, and we do this through a combination of process consulting, uh, training, and technology enablement. And, and I, I think that's important context for the rest of this presentation. Um, our DNA is, is PS Consulting. And, and even when we're doing technology projects, uh, we're looking at it with a, with a consulting and a, and a process lens. So I want to talk to you today about some of the things we're seeing in the marketplace relative to technology. Uh, and I want to share uh, some, with you some, some exciting things that, that, that we're doing about that. Uh, specifically, I want to introduce you to PS Digital digital transformation for better professional services performance. So digital transformation is, is not new news. It's been around for a number of years. People have written books about it. There are countless articles all over the internet. Uh, it's a major driving force in just about all industries from smart cities, uh, robotics and manufacturing, sensors and actuators and internet of technology and, and just about everything. Uh, it's enabled major market disruptors such as Uber and Lyft and Airbnb and, and, and several others. I, I think there's a big opportunity to take advantage of these technology advancements within the professional services space. Uh, and finally, I, I believe that we, our team consulting, are uniquely positioned uh, again, with our process and technology experience uh, to help customers along their journey. Uh, and that's some of what uh, I'm going to be talking about today. So what, what is digital transfer, transformation? If, if we're using just a simple 
definition. It, it's about using technology to achieve better outcomes, but but it's it's not just about the technology. It's not what I call paving the cow path or a lift and shift of, of approach. And, and I love this quote here because I think it's very appropriate. Um, it's not about fast caterpillars. And I, I know it's a, a tired and old expression, but I think it's as true today as ever. It's about the marriage of people, process, and technology. You need all three to unlock or to create true value. Uh, digital transformation also speaks to the extensiveness of, of the automation. So not just a specific part of your business, but all parts working together in an automated and, and efficient way. And doing this uh, in a way that you can truly offer something that's differentiated to your customers. So the market is there for digital transformation. You can find all sorts of statistics on the internet about investments and digital transformation. Uh, I use these just as, as an example. Um, on, on one side of the slide here, on the left side, uh, we see that companies, uh, technology companies and investors are investing in digital uh, uh, transformation technologies. Uh, and this example is specific to uh, the fourth industrial revolution. For those not familiar with that terminology, uh, many are saying that we're in the fourth industrial revolution, the first being uh, the steam engine. Uh, the second being electricity, uh, the third being computing, and then of course, the, like I said, the fourth being what we're in today with artificial intelligence, robotics, the internet of things, big data, et cetera. So, but the point here is that the number of investments in today's technology continues to rise. Um, on the right side of the slide here, we see that customers are investing in digital transformation technologies or initiatives. So 40% of investments uh, and overall, it's a $2 trillion market. So left side says technology providers are investing heavily. And then on the right side, the buyers are investing in digital uh, uh, initiatives. So as an old boss of mine used to say, Ladies and gentlemen, the buffet is ready. Grab your fork and knife and eat up, right? Just as I said on the slide previous, we've got providers and we've got buyers and it's a perfect market. So if I was to continue this buffet analogy, uh, the first one on the list here, we have our meat and potatoes. And this is the emergence of PSA or the emergence of professional services automation. And this is like the ERP for services organizations. A number of years ago, this was just the basics around time entry and then using that time entry to, to, to bill and invoice customers. Today's PSA solutions are far more robust and incorporate not only the T&E and invoicing as before, but it also includes resource management, project management, project accounting, revenue forecasting, and much more. So what you get is automated and connected processes within a single solution. So I have resources assigned to projects and tasks. Those resources have cost and revenue rates that drive my revenue and, and, and margin projections. Consultants enter time against those assignments, which then updates my actuals versus budget, Project managers update the plan, which in turn updates the resources availability. It's all connected. Roll all of that up, roll all of the projects up, and I get a view into my business. And I can slice that by project, by practice, by geography, um, or however you desire. So we, that, that's, that's the emergence of PSA. We have a number of other items to complement the meat and potatoes, if you will. Uh, so using the data in the core transactional systems to then make smarter decisions. So for example, I can use intelligence to match supply and demand. I do that knowing 
what roles and skills I'm looking for, what location, what level, what rate, and also who's available when. So I have I can have the system tell me the best resource based on a set of criteria. I can also use intelligence to tell me when a project is maybe off the rails or trending that way, or when I'm running out of money or budget or purchase order cover. Uh, collaboration is another uh, area of opportunity. Today is much different than when the entire delivery team was in the same location. Now we have teams doing delivery work from all over the world on the same project. So collaborating with not only project team members who, again, might be geographically dispersed, but also collaboration with partners, vendors, and more importantly, with customers. So a place to share deliverables, project plan, schedules, a place to collaborate about your project, and then keep the information and communication contained within that project and out of email uh, and offline or point-to-point -point communication. Uh, and then finally, connecting PSA, CRM, finance and invoicing, and maybe even support, uh, you can create an integrated customer experience. And again, that's what this is all about, is creating something that's different and creating value for our customers. So most customers uh, will not get there all at once. Uh, many are still just keeping the lights on. They're here uh, on the left. According to uh, our RMI research, this is about 30%. And here in the status quo, companies are heavily relying on spreadsheets. There, there are information, information silos. Uh, I've had customers in this area uh, that say they spend countless hours cobbling together spreadsheets all at the last minute to create an information package for their executive team. They're getting by, but it takes a lot of heroics. Uh, many have managed some automation, so they're moving to this, this middle piece here. Um, so maybe they've automated portions of their business, like resource management or project management, or maybe they've implemented a, a PSA, a professional services automation solution. Um, our research says that about a third are still unhappy and 70% are using spreadsheets. So 33% are those fast caterpillars that, that I referenced earlier. Um, they're automated, but maybe they haven't optimized uh, processes or, or maybe they're just not fully taking advantage of all the things that are available. Ultimately, the goal is to get all the way to the right of this slide, to transform. This is the perfect marriage of people, process, and technology. This is a well-oiled machine where processes are at least directionally in line with leading practice. There's trust and integrity in the underlying data. Uh, these companies are leveraging the information that's in the underlying system to guide decision making. Um, I have a customer I'm working with now uh, who are using reports in, and dashboards in their PSA system to run their business. So their, their QBRs or their quarterly business reviews are run using these reports and dashboards, not spreadsheets. So, you know, Certainly there, there are other uh, areas for continued improvement, but they're well on their way from automated to, to transform. So going from the status quo to transformed is hard. There are lots of considerations. Uh, which do I do first? Do I do process, then technology? Do I do technology, then process? Do I do both at the same time? Um, what's in scope for the, for the automation? Is it just resource management? Is it just project management? Is it both? What about knowledge management? Do I invoice in my ERP system or the PSA system? Where, do, where does revenue recognition happen? How do all of these things work together? 
Can I do things manual, like maybe integrations now, and then come back and do the automated integrations at a, at a, at a later point in time? Um, I've also had customers tell me, wait, we're still on spreadsheets and we know we're years behind, but we don't even know what questions to ask. We know there's new technology, uh, but we don't know the capabilities and the you know, art of the possible. Uh, there are PSA vendors, there are PPM vendors, the resource management or RM only vendors, there are time and expense only vendors. All of these acronyms, there are dozens of PSA solutions alone, uh, and many customers need help with just navigating what can be a very uh, complex and quite, quite frankly confusing marketplace. So this is where digital, uh, PS Digital can help. We have the process pedigree that I talked about before and the technology experience in doing this. So the stuff um, at the bottom of the slide here are the things we've been delivering for the last several years. So strategy, we can help build that roadmap. We can help prioritize what comes first based on the needs of the business and we can help you define what those needs are or should be based on leading practice. We know the marketplace, we can help you select uh, the vendor that's a best fit based on those needs. Uh, we can also uh, then help you implement the solution. So moving over into deployment, we can do project and program management, process optimization, training and change management. We can help you integrate it with your other core systems, your IP or HCM, uh, and, and migrate uh, over all of your data. And then once a solution is deployed, we can also help drive adoption and optimization through continuous process improvement or uh, the turning on the addition of new features or enhancements or continued support just to help run the business uh, continue to help training or do other things to augment and improve the overall solution. Uh, and in this area specifically, uh, we see a lot of need for process maturity, uh, continued training and education, uh, and also uh, reporting improvement to make best use of, of the data that's there uh, and move away from, from spreadsheets and, and information silos. So that's all the stuff that we've been delivering to our customers. Uh, but what's new and what's different is, is, that, is what we're gonna be bringing to market. And that's more uh, thought leadership, so white papers, uh, webinars like the one today, uh, sharing with you uh, more about what we're seeing and our experiences and helping customers navigate this digital transformation journey. Uh, more research. So today we do tons of research uh, through our uh, RMI organization, it's Resource Management Institute. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, more of that specific to PS Digital, so technology in the professional services space. Um, and finally, uh, we'll be creating a community of interest where people can collaborate, um, and, and share uh, their experiences and learn from, from, from one another. So some of the key takeaways here, uh, digital transformation is here to stay and it's only becoming more imperative. So companies that uh, are going to thrive are the ones taking advantage of these great technology advances. Uh, it's not just about the technology, it's also uh, people and process, uh, and then RTM and PS Digital specifically is well positioned to help. Uh, again, our heritage and DNA is in management consulting with deep uh, process and PS industry experience, uh, and we can bring a total solution uh, for digital transformation to the market under the PS Digital brand. Um, stay tuned for more, more around thought leadership, more research and a community of, of interest. And uh, finally, before we uh, open it up, I turn it over to Thomas and open it up for questions. 
uh, I wanted to let you know that we have a, a new website, uh, and it's the link is, is here, but it's uh, ps-digital.net. Uh, again, uh, more to come, uh, more content to come uh, on, on the website. Uh, we also have uh, additional webinars. Um, the next one will be November 13th, uh, and the topic will be managing connectedness uh, across a broad set of stakeholders. So as we've talked about earlier, uh, many of these uh, PS functions can be interconnected. So resources are assigned to projects and tasks. What happens when that plan changes? Who decides what happens uh, to the impact on resources? And how does that change my revenue forecast? So there are lots of stakeholders involved in the various uh, PS processes, and we'll talk about the, that interconnectedness uh, and how to navigate and manage in that, in that environment. So Thomas, with that, uh, I'll turn it over to you to open up the floor for any questions that you might have. Perfect, <clears throat> excuse me, perfect. Thank you, Wade. Uh, and while we're on this slide, I do, I do wanna mention that um, uh, if you go to ps-digital.net, um, and you can see it there just at the bottom of, of the screenshot here. There is a place to sign up uh, to get some more information about PS Digital. So if you want to do that, you can go to ps-digital.net, put your name and email address in there, and we'll be able to um, stay in touch with, of course, upcoming webinars. And as Wade mentioned, some of the thought leadership in the community uh, building that we want to do around this. So very good. Thank you, Wade. Yeah, we do have uh, questions coming in. We've got just a few minutes here at the at the end of the hour here to do this. But if you have any uh, that you haven't put in yet, go ahead and put your question in the uh, questions panel window there, your GoToWebinar panel, and we'll get to it. Uh, Wade, this first one here, it, it's funny. Um, when you had the slide up and you were talking about how hard it is to navigate the journey, uh, we had a couple different questions come in around this, but I'll just read this first one. Uh, it says, our business applications are definitely all over the place when we mostly use spreadsheets. So where do we start? Where do they begin? Uh, yeah, th thanks, Thomas, and thanks who, who, whoever asked this question. And we talked a little bit about this in, in one of the previous slides. We, we do get, I get this question a, a lot. Uh, and the, the path or the journey is different for, for each company. There's no one uh, single answer, but where you start is defining and prioritizing the needs of the business and then building a roadmap or a plan to meet those needs. So begin with the end in mind uh, to steal a, uh, something from Stephen Covey and somebody else that he stole it from. But but for some companies, their, their path uh, may, may start with automating a process area first, such as resource management, uh, because that's where the immediate need and pain is for others. Uh, their path may, may start with a, a PSA implementation. And maybe it's a, a global rollout. Maybe it's starting in one region and rolling it out to other locations because that initial re region is more ready than the other regions. But, the, but again, the important thing here, um, again, is to define and prioritize the needs uh, and then build a, a plan accordingly. So um, I've got the, the questions up here uh, as well. Thomas, I see another one. Uh, it says, um, we implemented a, a, PS, a PSA system a couple of years ago, I won't say which one, uh, and are fighting adoption and not getting the true value from our investment. What do you recommend? So yes, thanks for that. Uh, we again, we see this one quite a bit as well. Um, oftentimes, we're we're, we're told uh, our PSA system isn't isn't getting it done, and often not not always, but but often uh, it's not the tool. It's that uh, they're not they're following a non-standard uh, process or non-standard processes. Uh, so you know, sometimes the tooling isn't. A, a fit, or maybe it's an aging uh, PSA solution. Uh, sometimes there are new players uh, in the organization and their level of knowledge of, of how to use the system or what was done or why it was done just isn't there. Um, and so this is why we, we have our uh, diagnostic offering where we'll come in and do an assessment. We'll use 
a workshop approach uh, where we'll look at your, your processes and how you're using uh, the current tools in place uh, and, and make an assessment and recommend a, a path forward. And as you were talking about, did you see that other one come in there? Are you saying that just getting a PSA implemented correctly is all I need? <laughs> yeah, uh, well, good, good question, because we, we've been talking about this and we've been talking about the, the, the PSA being the, the meat and potatoes. Um, and, and so I, I can see where where someone would believe that. But but no, the answer is, um, you know, implementing the, the uh, PSA isn't the, the, the be all end all. Uh, it's certainly a, a great start. Uh, it'll get you to that, you know, from that status quo to that connected state that, that I talked about um, earlier. Um, but as we mentioned before, uh, many people who have automated are still using spreadsheets. So um, the PSA solution creates um, a, a, a solid foundation, uh, but then companies need to, to truly start using uh, the data that's there to drive better uh, decision making. And so, as I mentioned previously, there's a lot of new robust capabilities and, and intelligent uh, resource management as an example. Um, and so, um, you know, that, that's an area where they can, where they can take advantage of, of, of new um, technology. And then, you know, also integrating that, that PSA solution with other uh, tangential and related uh, systems like CRM and ERP uh, and other systems also important that can help drive additional efficiencies uh, and it can also create that that better uh, overall and integrated uh, customer experience that we talked about. Yep, perfect. Thanks, Wade. Hey, this one just came in too. Um, I think it's uh, one that uh, you've probably gotten a few times. Uh, how is PSA? How is a PSA system different from a regular PMO software? Well, uh, regular PMO software. I'm not familiar with the term regular PMO software, but but I think what what that means is there are project, what I'd call project tools like Microsoft Project, and there are some other uh, tools like that, like Smartsheets and, and things that a, that a PMO uh, might use. And those are certainly helpful because you can build a, a project plan and assign resources to it. But a PSA system is more than that. It incorporates some of those elements where you can build out those project plans, uh, but you can also uh, manage your resources and have a, a view of your resources and all the things that your resources are working on. Uh, those resources can enter time against those projects, which then you can use either in a PSA system or, or, or in an ERP system. You can then invoice for those and you can do things like revenue forecasting and things like that. That you can't do in, a, in your, your more traditional PMO uh, software. Okay, thanks, Wade. So, uh, Thomas, I think uh, I think that's it. I don't know that I see any more questions, and it looks like we're at the uh, at the bottom of the hour here. Um, anything? We else? are we are right at the bottom of the hour. Um, let me first um, thank everyone for taking the time to um, join us today as we introduce PS Digital and and dive into this. Uh, this conversation on digital transformation. A reminder there uh, on your screen, um, November 13th will be our next uh, webinar in this series, and we'll be sending out an invitation for that as well. Um, and as well as our last uh, webinar will be in mid-December, so more information to come on that. Uh, Wade, if you wanna scroll through a few slides there, I think, and uh, get your contact info up for anybody who wants to pull that down. You know, if you get if you didn't you didn't get a question or, or you, you see the deck or I go through the recording and you have another question, feel free to shoot us uh, an email and we'll get that answered. Uh, but with that said, we are at the bottom of the hour. Uh, thank you guys again for joining us today. Wade, thank you very much for bringing your perspectives to this topic. And with that, um, I'll sign off. Everybody have a great day. Okay, thanks everyone.